Coach, I hope you've had a great week, sir. Welcome into the game in Tuscaloosa. Oh, right. I'm fine. I'm uh, I'm glad we got by Mississippi State. And uh, that fourth and two or fourth and three, whatever it was, that was a key play that the quarterback made. In fact, that was the difference in the game. Well, Coach, it was a hostile environment. And, and let me start with that quarterback. What does it do when, when you talk about a, a gamer like Jalen Hurts, the confidence that he has and not rattled, ice water through the veins, and to be able to put the team on his back and, and carry that team to a W? Well, he, he just uh, – that was an outstanding game. You go back and look, most games are, are settled on two or three plays, and that one, uh, if – if Mississippi State had blitzed or, or stopped the quarterback, then they would have probably won the game, but they didn't. And you can just see the confidence in the Alabama team as they moved that ball on down and got the final touchdown. So uh, the Alabama did not lose their poise. Uh, they were in a hostile environment. Uh, and playing a tough game like that probably is really good for them because they're going to be playing another hostile environment when they play Auburn. Well, Coach, when you go back to Mississippi State and, and you look at Starkville, I know it's only 61,000, but that was one of the most intense environments that I've I've watched a game in. I mean, it, they brought the energy, and I know the artificial uh, cowbells and the artificial noisemakers, but it was a loud environment, hard to communicate on the sidelines. It's hard to communicate when you're in Tuscaloosa, too. you got got hundred and some thousand people, and they make some rackets, so you, you, you can't lay it one way or the other on, on the – the noise. Uh, my personal opinion, and nobody pays any attention, but I think that both sides should be quiet when the opposing team is trying to put the ball in play. I, I don't think that somebody jumping off sides should settle the difference in the game. And yet they holler and raise their hands and, and shout. And I, I, I just don't think that's within the spirit of the game myself. Coach, let me ask you on the defensive side of the football for Alabama. What what did you see? Because it, it wasn't, you know, one of your typical shut them down type defense. Uh, Mississippi State had a lot of success, especially on third down. Well, they, you know that Mississippi State's got a good football team. They just annihilated A and M, and and uh, they they played well. And and uh, Alabama has not played their best game. But in fact, statistically, they didn't play all that good against Georgia Tech. I mean, uh, uh, oh, uh, who's the last game they played? LSU, uh, sir. LSU. Yes, sir. They didn't play statistically well against LSU, but they won the game, and uh, that's and they won the game against Mississippi State. So, uh, you know, the other teams are, are want to beat Alabama. They're doing everything they can to win. So, I I'm extremely pleased that they won the game. I, uh, and won both of them. And now uh, the Auburn game is going to be a biggie. I understand that, but that's what college football is all about. Coach, any reaction last night at the college football playoff rankings? Alabama back at that number one spot. Clemson at two, Miami three, Oklahoma four, Wisconsin at five, and then Auburn at six. That, that, that's that's close. I had uh, Alabama and, and uh, Clemson and and uh, Oklahoma. Then then. Uh, I think I had uh, Miami and then Wisconsin. Uh, they're, they're all good football teams, uh, especially the ones that's undefeated. It's going to be hard to, to convince somebody that somebody that's lost a game is, should be ranked higher than somebody that hadn't lost a game. And Miami hadn't lost a game, and Wisconsin hadn't lost a game. Uh, but they've got more games to play. Coach, I'd love to get your thoughts about Georgia and Auburn. Uh, what a great performance it was from the Auburn Tigers last weekend. I just uh, I feel like the Auburn's going to win the game. I, in fact, I, I recommended that or suggested it in the, the in the various shows, but I didn't think that they would score forty points against Georgia. Uh, that that tells me that they're playing at the height of their game, and and they're going to be. You can't believe how excited they are to play Alabama in Auburn. I wish the game was played in in Tuscaloosa, but it's not. And, and that's what college football is all about. That's, that's going to be the uh, game of the century, really. Coach, when you look at, uh, obviously, Auburn in, in that front seven, uh, even against Mississippi State, how effective do you think a screen play would kind of help you a little bit, slowing down that aggressive front, not only uh, against the Auburn Tigers, but even all these aggressive fronts as Alabama will begin to see? Well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to get into what's good and what's not, but uh, the screen always slows down the rush. 
that good football team from the screen. Now they run the screen to the wide receiver and, and uh, breaking him back in behind uh, the blockers. There's several ways to run the screen, but uh, yeah, good football teams run the screen. There's no question about that. Coach, uh, certainly uh, want, to, want to talk a lot of uh, Alabama football, but but from being where you have been, under Coach Bryant here in, in the 60s was part of national championships. You came back to the University of Alabama, uh, won a national title in 92. Can you help us, if you were explaining the Alabama-Auburn rivalry to an outsider, someone from not from the state, how would you explain the, the Alabama-Auburn rivalry from your perspective? Well, I'll, I'll start off uh, explaining the Texas A&M Texas rivalry. The people talk about it the week before the game and talk about it the week after the game. The Alabama Auburn game, they talk about it every day of the week. Uh, somebody somewhere is talking about the Alabama Auburn game. So that uh, that that puts the, um, the the magnitude of the importance of that game because uh, not only do they talk about it the week before the game and the week after, but they discuss it every day uh, uh, during the entire year. So that. That's the difference in the rivalries between Alabama and Auburn and most of the other rivalries. Coach, I, I just got a, uh, a text message a couple of minutes ago. I, I was supposed to remind and talk about this. Uh, you're going to be coming to our, our town, uh, Birmingham, Alabama, uh, with Coach Pat Dye this coming weekend. It's Sunday, eight, 7 p.m. is when the doors open, 8 p.m., and that is going to be uh, you and Coach Dye getting together for a little speaking engagement uh, this weekend. Yeah, we are. We're gonna. Uh, we, in fact, that's. It was scheduled uh, uh, two or three months ago, and I had a stroke, and we, we put it back off. And so now uh, we are going to be there this Sunday, and hopefully the people will come out. And, and Pat and I are good friends, and uh, uh, it'll be an opportunity for us to talk about the Alabama Auburn game. And I'll be pushing Alabama, and he'll be pushing Auburn, and and uh, hopefully the people will come out and. and have a fun afternoon, fun evening. Iron City, Birmingham, and, and it's actually it's ironcitybham.com is the website. You can actually buy tickets right now, ironcitybham.com. Uh, Coach, when you look at Mercer, how hard is it to, to – Don't even know where Mercer is. Georgia. It's the, in Georgia? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir, they are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I can't even find uh, in, in the – and the uh, point spread, uh, Alabama's not even in it, so I'm, I'm sure that they're off the. Uh, they probably have them up 50 points or something like that. I, I can't say that's an advantage uh, or a disadvantage to be playing a team like that. I, I personally rather play a team that I'm going to have to play fairly hard. I want to win the game. There's no question about that, but uh, I don't think there's any competition with Alabama and Mercer. Hey, Coach, before I get to these phone calls, and we'll certainly take yeah, now them. Let me say, Auburn playing the same thing. Auburn plays a, a gimme team, too, so it's it, it sort of has a way of working out. I think they're playing Louisiana Monroe or something like that. So. Yeah, yes, sir, and it, it's kind of uh, – but but it's also a chance where Alabama can maybe get a little bit healthier uh, on the defensive side of the football, maybe get a few of these guys back and maybe not have to play your starters in long. Right, and uh, did, did, uh, the linebackers are they getting? Are they going to be healthy uh, against Auburn? I don't really care about Mercer, but are they going to be healthy against uh, Auburn? Coach, I, I think uh, we're we're hearing some rumblings, but it seems like right now the guys that are are going to be that played against Mississippi State that'll probably have to go against Auburn. Uh, the, the the guys that we're talking about, Mac Wilson and some others, might be able to get back by bowl time, college football playoffs but probably not before Auburn is what we're hearing. And yeah, that, that's well, not coming from Coach Saban. That's just coming from little rumblings. Right. And uh, the year that we won it all, we stayed extremely healthy. That's one of the reasons that we were successful. Everybody started the first game, started the last game. And, and you, you're just not quite as good when you lose three or four key players. Well, and, and Coach, when you think about I, I think it's remarkable what Coach Saban and, and Coach Pruitt have done with the defense, losing – you know, four or five linebackers, most teams would have to mail it in. Alabama's been able to maintain somewhat consistency on that side of the football. Yeah, well, the Mississippi State scored, what, 24 points? Yes, sir. Uh, so, anyway, that's that's probably a high against an, uh, Alabama because Alabama usually doesn't give up uh, uh, 
the strength of the Alabama team, very few people realize that one of the strengths is their punting game. So uh, when the opposing team gets the ball, they usually have to go 80, 90 yards with it because they've got a, an outstanding punter, and it's, so it's hard to move the ball 70, 80, 90 yards against Alabama's defense. Let's take some phone calls, 205-342-9904. As always, we start out with Red. Red, good afternoon. You're on with Coach Stallings. Good evening, Coach. Sound like you're doing good today, sir. Brad, I'm feeling pretty good. Thank you. I'm, uh, there's not going to be a whole lot of good games to watch this week, but last week there was lots of good ones. And, uh, uh, that, and Auburn played a good game. Alabama played a good game. Uh, Miami played a good game. Clemson won. Oklahoma won. But uh, this week there's there's not many more key games, in my opinion. Uh, you get some rest, and then the next week you can get – Get some good old Thanksgiving eating there and be with the family watching some up good football. Right. Right. Hey, Coach, when you was a uh, head coach here at Alabama, what was the uh, most hardest hitting, just old school, smash mouth football game you ever was a part of? Now, now, say that again, Red. I didn't understand it. When you were the head coach here, which game would you say was the hardest hitting game? with just smash mouth football and just real hard hitting, you know, all the way to the end. Well, the the Auburn game was always a a tough game. Georgia played us a tough game, and then Mississippi State uh, played us tough physical games. So I would say those three teams were the most physical teams we played against. Well, Coach, as always, I enjoy talking to you and uh, have safe travels coming to Birmingham. And tell Miss Ruth Ann Hello, y'all have a blessed day, sir. Thank you, Red. I uh, will do that and good to talk to you. Hope you're feeling good, Red. No doubt. Uh two oh five three four two nine nine zero four one line available. Luke, you're on with Coach Stallings. Oh, hey Mr. Stallings, how are you doing? Fine, Luke. How are you? Oh, you know, I'm doing great. I just want to say that it's an honor being able to talk with you over the phone. Um and my question for you is is uh, you know, me and Brian were having a conversation last night about um uh, you know the quote unquote rat poison. Have you ever experienced what's it like if being a head coach in Alabama and being on one side of the fans that, you know, they love you to death, they support you, they root for you, um, but at the same time you coming off the game um that people throw off of, let's just say, um, like the Mississippi State game. How do you find a balance between the good and the so called bad? Right, right, we we sort of breaking out. What was the question that he asked? Well, coach, he was talking about trying to find the the balance between the good and the bad. And I don't know if you, you're aware of this, but uh, the media obviously, you know, they uplift Alabama. And Coach Saban said that he's trying to get his players to listen to him and not to the media. He calls it rat poison, uh, is what Coach Saban calls it, uh, uh, and that's what he's talking about. Coach I, Saban, I, I would say, but. But by and large, they listen to Coach Saban. Uh, you can't keep them from turning on the television and reading the paper, but when it comes right down to it, uh, I will guarantee you they'll listen to Coach Saban as opposed to listening to the media. So, uh, but, but Coach, a lot of a lot of criticism right now against Alabama, and I know you don't feel the same way, but, uh, you know, th- this Alabama team is going to hear a little bit negative talk. We're already hearing it here in Tuscaloosa. Auburn's going to beat Alabama. Auburn's playing better football. Alabama's beat up injuries. Uh, they're going to have to hear this for about the next two weeks that that Auburn's going to beat Alabama. That might uh, help a little motivation inside that locker room. Well, it's, uh, sure, and the game's going to be settled in the arena. It's not going to be settled on what people say or what people think. So uh, Coach Saban will get his team ready to play, and the Auburn coach will get their team ready to play, and it'll be settled in the arena. But I I think that it'll be a good football game. I just think Alabama's a better football team. They're higher ranked. They've been ranked all year, and Auburn's getting better. There's no question about that. Uh, who, who would have thought that they would have beat Georgia the way they did? did and and they, they've won several games by a, a number of points, but Alabama has too. And I guarantee you when the uh, when the people that make the, the choice on uh, who's, who's the best football team, Alabama will be the favorite in that game. Coach, how stressful is it when you look at all these coaching uh, circles right now? A lot of coaches are, are getting let go and 
you know, some coaches that have obviously won some games and, and some that haven't really got the job done. But how stressful is it when you look at all these coaching changes for the players and, you know, having to sort of be dedicated to one guy and then he's leaving and another guy comes in and you have to sort of buy into what he's trying to, to get the team to buy into? Yeah, it's it's very stressful. I You know, I I worry about the guy that loses his job. I don't worry about the guy that gets a, gets a good raise and so forth. But those others, and then the coaching profession, uh, win-loss records are not always the same. Some people just have better players than others, and, and yet we're all expected to, to win the games. I know when I was coaching at Texas A&M, my three preseason games was LSU, Ohio State, and Michigan. Well, uh, uh, win-loss records are not the same. They, uh, you take a and now, they'll play three gimmies. I never had a gimme game. So uh, win-loss records are not the same. Coach, uh, that, that sounds like a pretty nasty schedule when you talk about a, uh, Texas A&M, and certainly you played a great schedule here in Alabama. Uh, but uh, it, it's very difficult in this current day of college football. And those were all on the road. We didn't play any of them at home. And uh, the seven years that I was at a and I never had an easy preseason game. We, we played Nebraska and all, all kinds of – and now people want to be bowl eligible. And so they play three games, and they're just sort of gimme games, and all that to win is three games, and they're bowl eligible. But back when I was coaching at a and you had to win the championship to go to a bowl, but that's not the case now. Well, Coach, uh, I'm glad that you were feeling uh, good and, and certainly enjoyed the conversation talking about Alabama and Mercer and a little bit of Alabama and Auburn. We won't tell Coach Saban that we worked in the Auburn game, but uh, we'll certainly look forward to doing it again next week, Coach. I hope you have a great week. Well, and I, I'm looking forward to that game, and uh, I hope that they can they can rest some of the players. They, they can't overlook Mercer. Like I said, I don't even know where they are, but uh, the game's going to count. So Alabama wants to finish on a strong note. They don't have to beat them 60 to nothing, but they just need to finish on a strong note because it won't be long before they'll be tainted up in Auburn.